The Carnival Winter was nearly over and the forest friends were sitting in Dolly's house. It's time we started getting ready for the carnival, Flutter the Butterfly said. What are you going to dress up as? Berry asked. It's a secret, Flutter answered. You have to keep your costume a secret so that we can surprise each other at the carnival. You're right. Let's go home and get started. We've only got a few days left, Balthazar said. Berry quickly made up his mind. He decided to dress up as a mushroom. He used a white sheet for a cape and made a hat out of a red bowl. He painted white dots on the bowl. Dolly made a flower costume. She cut leaves out of green paper and sewed them on a green blanket. That was her dress and she made petals out of purple paper. Balthazar the bee and Betty the bumblebee worked together. Balthazar dressed up as a devil and Betty dressed up as an angel. Bubble the baby beetle sat in his hammock and started to make his lion costume. The lights were on in every home in the forest on the night before the carnival. Everybody was working on their costume and busy preparing for the celebrations the following day. Then the big day arrived. The forest friends decided to have the carnival at Stanley's house. They all worked hard and decorated the stag beetle's home with coloured streamers and balloons. While this was going on, Rosita the rose beetle was busy making delicious cakes at her house. Dolly, Leapy and Eddie the Potato Beetle all lent a hand. Then the time came for them all to put their costumes on. Stanley dressed up as a dice and waited for his friends. The first to arrive were Berry and Dolly. He was dressed as a mushroom and she was dressed as a flower. Then Balthazar came as a little devil and Betty as an angel, with Flutter in a crab costume. Leapy looked just like a cactus. Bubble was dressed as a lion, Eddie was a chef, and Rosita was a bunch of grapes. Her dress was covered in shiny balloons. The firefly was dressed as a pencil, and the flea was an octopus. Sam came as a soldier, and one of the little ants was dressed up as a pancake. Suddenly, Zephyr the dragonfly burst in crying. It's gone! My beautiful princess dress has disappeared! I washed it and I hung it out to dry, but the wind blew it away! Zephyr sobbed, and the others tried to comfort her. I don't need my soldier hat, I've got a sword, Sam Snail suggested. No, that's for boys. I had a lovely princess dress, but the wind blew it away. We'll make you a new costume, Leapy said, a sun costume. Zephyr liked this idea very much. This yellow curtain will make a great cape, Dolly shouted. And these yellow pieces of paper can be the sun's rays, Stanley said, and took some of the streamers down. They cut, glued, sewed and stitched, and the beautiful sun costume was ready in no time. I can lend you my little lantern. The pencil doesn't really need a lantern, laughed the firefly. Thank you. Zephyr said. She was so happy, she blushed. The forest friends danced and sung all night and agreed Zephyr had the most special costume of all. As what could be more special than a sun that shone at night? Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Alfonso's Fiddle one autumn day, Alfonso the Cricket stood happily playing his fiddle in the mushroom field. 
The forest friends were all enjoying the lovely music. The little ants were playing football on the hill. But, oh dear, the ball bounced away and knocked the fiddle clean out of Alfonso's hands. Alfonso <laughs> shouted in horror. My fiddle! My fiddle's broken! And then he burst into tears. He was sobbing so loudly that everyone came to see what the fuss was all about. Alfonso pointed angrily at the spotty ball. That ball! That ball is to blame! And those naughty ants! Where am I going to get a fiddle from now? He picked his broken fiddle up, went into his house and slammed the door shut behind him. Alfonso! Alfonso, come out! I'm sure we can help you! Barry pleaded. But Alfonso didn't want to see anybody. His friends sat sadly in the mushroom field and didn't know what to do. Then Dolly had an idea. I know! Let's make Alfonso a new fiddle! Yes, let's make a new fiddle! Flutter the butterfly nodded. I know who can help us! We have to find Charlie the click beetle. He made Alfonso's first fiddle. The band of friends set off and walked and walked until they reached a blue house. They knocked on the door. A tiny, timid beetle popped his head out. He wore a blue hat and had beautiful dark blue wings. Who are you? he asked. Dolly told Charlie the whole story. Oh, but don't be sad. If that's your problem, I'm happy to help. Alfonso will be playing music on his new fiddle in no time at all. The click beetle gave everybody a job to do. Some collected wood for the body of the fiddle, while others gathered grass for the strings. Now he had everything he needed, Charlie got to work. He sawed, sanded, polished and waxed. And then, like a little miracle, the new fiddle was ready. Can I try it? Dolly asked. No, it's Alfonso's instrument, Flutter told her. But I want to have my own musical instrument, Dolly sulked. Me too, me too, the little ants shouted. Quiet, said Charlie. Why don't you all start an orchestra? A great big orchestra. Like a music band? And everybody could have their own instrument? That's a very good idea. The first thing they made was a harp for Dolly. Stanley the stag beetle got a double bass and Eddie the potato beetle had a cello. Berry made a trumpet out of a lily. Morris the Maybug made a horn from a honeysuckle flower. The big spider used horse chestnuts and acorns for drums, while Zephyr and Leapy made cymbals out of pebbles. Charlie carved flutes from birch twigs for the ants. Flutter the Butterfly got a lute, and Balthazar the Bee got a zither. Bubble the baby beetle played a triangle. They all had a quick practice and then headed for Alfonso's house. Alfonso heard the music and looked out of his window to see where it was coming from. He was surprised by what he saw. Please, Alfonso, the little ant began. Don't be mad at us for breaking your fiddle. We'd like you to have this new one as a present. Charlie made it! Alfonso began to play straight away and the sound of his fiddle filled the forest once more. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Bubbles Leapy, Zephyr, Berry and Bubble were having a contest to see who could blow the biggest bubbles. Look at the size of those! Leapy's the best! Bubble cheered. The grasshopper girl blew bigger and bigger bubbles while the others stood around and clapped. Christopher soon arrived carrying Dolly and her yellow cousin Katie Ladybird. Can we join in the game? 
Berry passed the bubble blower to Dolly and the two tiny ladybirds began to blow bubbles. Look at the size of those ones. Katie's bubbles are even bigger than Leapy's. Leapy gave Katie a grumpy look and started to blow bubbles again, but none as large as Katie's. You're a very clever ladybird girl. You've blown the biggest bubbles today. Katie's not even a real ladybird. Her back's yellow. She should paint it red instead. Leapy, it's mean to tease, and you're only teasing because Katie blew bigger bubbles than you. Leapy, you've upset Katie. Help me cheer her up again. I think I'd rather go home. She really didn't mean it. She was only being mean because of the bubbles. Leapy arrived home in the meantime, but she did not know what to do with herself. She sat down to eat, but her food tasted all wrong. She started to draw, but she kept getting it wrong. And then she decided to take a walk. Christopher the canary happened to be flying by. I didn't mean to upset Katie. I know, Christopher smiled, and he wrapped his wings around the sobbing grasshopper girl. It's not nice to tease. I didn't mean to. Katie is a real ladybird and her yellow wings look lovely. Then tell her just that, like you've told me. Leapy decided to take Christopher's advice. She set off to tell Katie that she did not mean to upset her. But when she arrived, all she said was, What are you doing? We're going for a trip to the lake. Katie replied. And just then, Harry Hedgehog arrived with his conquer cart. Dolly and Katie jumped in the back and they were off on their way. Leapy stood and gave a sad wave. The next day, she set off again to say sorry to Katie. Katie was sitting down by the lake. Hi, Katie, she began. There's something I'd like to say. But before she could begin, Spider arrived. I've got to go, Leapy. You can tell me tomorrow, OK? Katie told her and jumped onto Spider's back and hurried off with Dolly and Flutter. Why are you so sad? Bubble asked. I'd like to apologise to Katie, but it keeps going wrong. Don't be sad. Come inside. We'll think of something. I've got an idea already. Why don't you give Katie a little present? I know, I could give her my bubble blower, Leapy exclaimed and hugged the little flower beetle. Leapy wrapped the bubble blower up the moment she got home and she could hardly wait to give the yellow butterfly girls a lovely present. The sun was setting in the sky when she walked over to the spotty house. Dolly, Katie, Zephyr and Berry were planting flowers outside. What beautiful flowers! Can I help too? Of course you can. I'll show you which flowers we're planting where, Dolly explained. Katie, I brought this for you, Leapy stuttered and passed the package to the yellow ladybird girl. It was silly of me to say that you're not a real butterfly. Katie opened the parcel and smiled. A bubble blower. Thank you, Leapy. I'm not upset anymore. On a winter day, Iris the Ice Beetle invited all her friends to go skiing. Has everyone got skis? she asked. I haven't, said Berry. And I haven't, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl joined in. Neither have I, Flutter the Butterfly added. Then let's make some skis for you. It isn't hard, Iris said with a smile. The friends all joined in. They sawed and sanded thin planks of wood, fixed foot straps to them and made poles for everyone. And the skis were finished by lunchtime. They all walked up the hill together. When they got to the top, they strapped on their skis and put on their ski helmets. Then Iris asked, 
Does everyone know how to ski? I can teach anyone who doesn't. They all nodded except for Flutter. The little butterfly girl didn't know how to ski, but she didn't say anything. It can't be all that hard. I'll soon get the hang of it, she thought to herself. She only dared whisper the truth to the green grub. Berry was the first to go. Whoopee! He shouted with a broad grin as he sped down the snowy hillside. Dolly came after Berry, and then Balthazar, and then the others. Flutter was the last one to set off. She took a deep breath and pushed herself off. The only problem was she didn't know how to stop. She carried on skiing over the next hill and then the hill after that until she had skied a very long way away from the others. The little butterfly girl only stopped when she fell over into a big pile of snow. It was a while before the others realised that Flutter was missing. Flutter doesn't know how to ski, the green grub eventually told them. She can't ski, they all asked in surprise. This was her first time. She was very nervous, but she didn't dare to mention it. Oh, I'm frightened that something terrible has happened to her. The friends set off to search for Flutter. Dr. Owl was flying past, and he spotted Flutter in the snow below. Flutter, what happened to you? he asked. I couldn't stop, and I fell over in the snow. I really hurt myself. I thought I'd never be able to stop. I don't want to ski again, Flutter sobbed. Dr. Owl felt very sorry for the little butterfly girl, so he put her on his back and took her to his house. I'll bandage you up, and then I'll take you to Iris's house. I'm sure the others will be looking for you, Dr. Owl said in a reassuring voice. The little friends frantically searched around, but they couldn't find Flutter anywhere. They walked sadly back to Iris's house. But Flutter was waiting for them when they arrived. They were overjoyed. Hooray! Are you all right, Flutter? Tell us what happened to you, Dolly told her. Flutter told them the whole story from beginning to end. So you don't know how to ski, Iris asked in surprise. I'll teach you. You'll soon learn how to turn and stop, and you'll be able to ski down even the steepest hills. Thank you, the butterfly girl said with a smile. Iris started to teach Flutter to ski the very next morning. By the end of the first day, the little butterfly girl could ski down small hills and stop safely at the bottom. Look! Flutter can ski! This calls for a celebration! Stanley shouted, and he started to play a tune on the icicles. The others sang and danced around the happy little butterfly. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Missing Nuts Hello, Barry. Hurry up. Let's go and see Reggie Squirrel. We really should say goodbye to him before he hibernates for winter, Dolly the ladybird said. Berry put on his hat, scarf and gloves and the two friends made their way to Reggie Squirrel's home. Their friend the squirrel was sitting on a branch in front of his home. We wanted to say goodbye before you snuggle up to sleep through the chilly winter. Why don't you come up for a glass of juice and a quick nut snack, Reggie suggested. Look at all the yummy food I've gathered for winter. My pantry's full. But the pantry was empty. Oh my, where have all my hazelnuts and walnuts gone? Where are my delicious pine cones, acorns and raisins? I think this might be where the nuts rolled out, Berry said, pointing to a little hole in the corner of the pantry. Someone's been chewing the tree trunk, Dolly said in surprise. And I think I know who it was, the little snail added. 
Don't worry, Reggie. We'll catch the troublemakers and find your nuts. And don't forget the pine cones and acorns too, the squirrel added. The two friends headed towards the big meadow. They heard loud laughter as they got closer. I knew it was them. They're always getting into some sort of trouble, Dolly whispered to Berry. I'm sure they're doing something naughty right now, Berry added. Someone chewed a hole in Reggie Squirrel's tree trunk right outside his pantry and now all of his nuts are missing. It was you lot, wasn't it? But we didn't mean any harm. We were just chewing the bark like we always do and we didn't know that his pantry was on the other side, the smallest bark beetle explained. What can we do to help? Come with us and we'll find the nuts that rolled away. We haven't got that much time. It could start to snow at any minute. We'll never be able to find his food in the snow, so hurry. They all took a close look at the tree trunk. The nuts all rolled out here and then they fell to the ground and carried on rolling down the hill, Reggie explained. The gang of friends found Reggie's goodies in a pile at the bottom of the hill. Hooray! Reggie shouted with delight. Would you please bring all the food back to my home while I patch the hole up in my pantry? Reggie told the bark beetles. They carefully placed the hazelnuts, walnuts and acorns back in his pantry. Berry and Dolly gave them a hand. They worked as fast as they could, but it got dark very quickly and they still had a huge stack left at the bottom of the hill. We'll never finish in time, one of the bark beetles sighed. We could really use some extra help, another added. Berry the snail suddenly sprang to his feet and left in a hurry without saying a word. He was soon back and had a trumpet in his hand. He blew it so loudly that everybody could hear it. Soon all the friends in the forest gathered. Dolly climbed up on a big boulder and told them all what had happened to Reggie Squirrel's winter food supply. All the nuts rolled out of the hole. We've got to take the food back to Reggie's home. If you all help, it can be done before dark. Ready, set, go, Berry said, and he lifted a nut from the pile. He gave it to Dolly. She handed it to one of the bark beetles. The bark beetle gave it to the bee. The bee handed it to the dragonfly. And so it moved back up the hill to the squirrel's pantry. By the time the moon appeared in the sky, all the hazelnuts, acorns, walnuts and chestnuts were safely stowed away in Reggie Squirrel's winter home. Reggie happily put the last nut back in his packed pantry. Thank you. I'm so glad I got so many good friends. It's time for me to tuck myself up in bed before it starts snowing. See you again in spring. The grateful squirrel yawned. One sunny summer afternoon, Dolly decided to cook a strawberry cake. She asked Stanley the stag beetle and Balthazar the bee to go and collect wild strawberries in the forest. The two boys set off. Balthazar soon spotted a pebble in the middle of the path and he started to kick it along. But Stanley also liked the look of the pebble and he tackled it off Balthazar. That's not fair, Stanley. I found it. I want to kick it down the path. It's my pebble now. Find another pebble to kick. But I found it, so it's mine, Balthazar moaned. There are loads of pebbles. Find another one, Stanley said, trying to close the argument. But Balthazar wouldn't leave it at that. He pushed Stanley out of the way so that he could kick the pebble. The two of them continued to push and shove until they both tumbled down the hill into the babbling brook. Alfonso the cricket came out of his house to see what all the noise was about. What's going on? he asked. It's all Stanley's fault. He took my pebble. It wasn't your pebble. I was just a better kicker. That's enough of that, 
Alfonso interrupted. Come inside, get dry, and then tell me all about what started this silly argument. The two boys muttered to themselves as they followed the cricket into his little house. They hung their wet clothes out in the hot sun and sat wrapped in towels while they waited for them to dry. Alfonso gave them both a glass of lemonade and a biscuit. The sun's warm rays soon dried the clothes. Stanley and Balthazar munched sulkily on their biscuits. They told Alfonso all about what had happened and how they had rolled down the hill into the brook. I've got a whole collection of pebbles. Pebbles? Can we have a look? Balthazar enthused. Of course, Alfonso said with a proud smile, and he placed a large box on the table. Where did you find all these lovely pebbles? Stanley asked. Down by the brook. You can collect some too if you like. They filled their baskets with pebbles. They sat sorting them and organising them until it started to get dark. The little stag beetle and the bee boy said goodbye to their cricket friend and started to walk back up the hill. They soon came to Dolly's house. The little ladybird girl shouted angrily out of the window. Where are the strawberries? Oh dear. The strawberries? We forgot the strawberries. Dolly, look at the lovely pebbles we collected with Alfonso. What am I supposed to do with them? Make pebble cakes? I asked for strawberries. But we forgot, Stanley admitted, and he told her the whole long story. Well, I see. Let me have a look at those pebbles, if you didn't bring any strawberries. We should paint something on them. This one looks just like a little house. And this one, I might paint a smiley face on it. That's a super idea. We can invite the others and spend all day painting pebbles. Great. The next morning, Berry the little snail boy arrived at Dolly's house with Flutter the butterfly, Zephyr the dragonfly, Leapy the grasshopper, Eddie the potato beetle and Bubble the baby beetle. Where is Stanley and Balthazar? Berry asked with a disappointed sigh. Here we are, the stag beetle and the bee boy announced, and they proudly presented Dolly with a big basket of strawberries. Oh, thank you, the little ladybird girl said, and she mixed the cake while the others got to work painting the pebbles. When they had finished, they invited Alfonso to come and see their exhibition. They all look really good. I'll bring my pebbles tomorrow and we can paint them too, the cricket told his friends. When the strawberry cake was ready, they all sat around the table and ate every last crumb. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Witches. It was a warm summer day and Berry, Dolly and their friends were talking about witches. Do you really think witches exist? Balthazar the bee asked. And they fly around on broomsticks at night? I'm not sure, Berry mumbled. Then Berry and Dolly decided to walk home. Why don't we come back here later? We might see some witches, the ladybird suggested. They packed themselves a tasty picnic and went back to the meadow. They stared at the sky for a long time, but nothing happened. Come on, Dolly, let's go home. I don't think witches are real. Dolly stopped and stared. Berry, I just heard a strange noise from behind that tree. Oh, Berry, the leaves are moving. The two friends hugged each other in fright. A witch suddenly flew out and Berry and Dolly screamed. Then another witch appeared in the sky. Run, Berry! Run and hide! And they ran as fast as they could. The two of them hid behind a bush. Oh, Dolly, it's too bad our friends aren't here with us. Just then the two witches landed took off their capes and hats and turned to smile. 
But your friends are here. It was us, Flutter and Balthazar. This made Dolly very mad. Really? You were the witches? It was very mean of you to scare us like that. It was only meant to be a joke, Balthazar explained. Berry was angry too. It was a very bad joke. You'll be sorry you did this. And the two friends stomped off home. We should play a joke on them now, Berry. Do you think we should scare them too? That's it, Dolly exclaimed. I've got an idea. Flutter and Balthazar were left standing in the meadow. What should we do now? They felt a bit ashamed. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Berry and Dolly ran to the ladybird's house and dressed up as little devils. They put black clothes on with black hats and added red horns to make themselves look like real devils. Hurry, Dolly! Berry was impatient. I can see them coming. They quickly jumped behind a bush and waited for Flutter and Balthazar to get close. Then they jumped out and scared the living daylights out of their friends. Help! Devils! The butterfly and the bee screamed. Now do you see how bad it is when someone scares you? The little snail said. What? Is that you, Berry? That was a really nasty thing to do. Nasty thing? Your witches were much scarier. Berry shouted. That's not true. The devils were scarier. That's enough, Dolly told them off. Stop this silly arguing. Let's be friends. We promise never to do it again. But you have to promise not to scare us either. You're right, the others nodded. Do you want to try the devil's hats on? Dolly asked. Yes, please. You can try our witches' hats on if you like and sit on our broomsticks. Whippee! This is super! Berry whooped. We're flying just like witches! Yes! Balthazar agreed. Like real witches! The Sandcastle On a sunny summer day, Berry, Dolly, Bubble and Balthazar put on their swimming costumes, grabbed their buckets and spades and set out for Sand Island to build castles. Look at this huge watermelon! Balthazar said in surprise. Oh, let's take it with us! Then we can all have a feast at the end of the day. OK, Berry, we'll take it. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar and Bubble carefully rolled the watermelon in front of them. But when the friends got to the top of the hill, the round watermelon started to roll away down the slope. Stop it! Dolly shouted to the others. Bubble pounced on the watermelon, but he couldn't stop it. The baby beetle slipped off and bumped his head. The juicy watermelon just carried on rolling. They all ran after it as fast as they could, but the watermelon was much faster than all of them. Then a terrible thing happened. The watermelon got to the bottom of the hill and smashed into a sharp rock. Our lovely watermelon smashed into pieces. Oh, the watermelon! Balthazar was very sad too. Why are you all complaining? Let's eat it instead, the baby beetle suggested. So the four friends sat down and started to munch on the watermelon. They ate the sweet red fruit until their tummies were full. We'd better hurry to Sand Island, or there'll be no time left to build sand castles. Dolly, wait for me, I'll fly with you, Balthazar said. 
Me too, Bubble added. But I can't fly. Are you three going to leave me here? Berry asked with a sad sob. Let's build boats out of the watermelon rind. This way Berry can sail to the island with us, Balthazar suggested. They selected four strong pieces of melon rind. One for Dolly, one for Berry, one for Balthazar and one for Bubble. They made the masts out of strong branches and the sails out of large leaves. When they were done, they launched the little boats on the water and the wind quickly carried them away to Sand Island. Hooray! We're sailing, Berry said with an excited squeak. They all got to Sand Island with plenty of time left to play. Look! Someone's coming! And he's got a bucket in his hand! Indeed, there was a cheerful beetle walking towards them on the sandy shore. Who are you? Dolly asked. I'm Sean, the sand beetle. I live here and was about to build a sand castle. Really? Balthazar asked. Can we join you? Of course you can. Let's all build together, Sean said with joy. The five of them built a grand sandcastle with all kinds of tunnels, towers and bridges. Now all it needs is a flag on top, Dolly said. So she drew a picture of Sean on a leaf and stuck it in the very top of the castle. That looks super! Does that mean it's my sandcastle now? Sean said enthusiastically. When the sun went in, Dolly and her friends said goodbye to Sean and headed home. Good night, King of the Castle! Dolly shouted, waving goodbye to their new friend. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Kindergarten One autumn morning, Dolly knocked excitedly on Berry's door. Come quickly, Berry, or we'll be late. Berry got ready and the two friends held hands and walked to the nursery together. Lots of little children were gathered in the playground. They were all so happy to see each other. There was Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly, Stanley the stag beetle, Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly, Alfonso the cricket, Leapy the grasshopper and Bubble the baby beetle. Mrs Bumblebee patiently guided everybody into their classrooms. The little, middle and top children went into different rooms. Bubble was in the little group. He waved to Berry and Dolly from the doorway. The day started with exercises. After breakfast, the children made beautiful pictures using the leaves they collected in the woods. When everybody had finished, Mrs Bumblebee gathered the children in a circle. She taught them lots of songs and games. The children all danced around. Then it was playtime. Mrs Bumblebee sat in a rocking chair and watched the children. Berry and the boys ran straight over to the car box and started playing cars. They built ramps and tunnels. Can I join in, boys? Dolly asked. She was holding a broken red car. Oh no, Dolly, you can't play cars with that old thing, Berry told her. And anyway, cars are for boys, not girls. That made Dolly cry. The boys don't want to play with me, she told Flutter. Flutter, Leapy and Zephyr quickly cheered her up. Come and play with us. We're playing with dolls. The girls dressed their dolls in pretty dresses, fed them and rocked them to sleep. Dolly liked this game a lot. Then Berry got into an argument with Morris the Maybug. 
You keep knocking my car over. It's not fair. You're a cheat. That's not true. You're a cheat, replied Morris. That's it. I'm not playing with you anymore, Barry said sulkily and left the boys. Can I join in your game? Barry asked his friend Dolly. You can't play with us. It's a girl's game, Dolly sulked. But I brought this doll with me. It's got curly hair. I want to play with you. All right. Come and play with us. But now you have to let me play cars with you. Children, time to wash your hands. Mrs. Bumblebee shouted, then go and sit down at the tables. Mrs. Earwig, the dinner lady, dished up their dinner. When everybody had finished eating, Berry and Dolly collected up all the plates and glasses. Then the children had a little lie down while Mrs. Bumblebee read them a story. They all listened in silence, and a few of them fell fast asleep. When they got up, they all had a snack and went out into the playground. It was enormous and filled with all kinds of slides, climbing frames and swings, with a big wooden train in the middle. Barry and Morris quickly made friends again and played on the swings together. Dolly helped Bubble up the slide and caught him at the bottom. Bubble liked that a lot. The rest of the day flew by and soon the children were waving goodbye to each other. They couldn't wait for tomorrow to come. Fairy and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Fairy cards. Flutter the Butterfly Girl had a favourite card game. There were 16 cards in total, with pictures of pretty fairies in yellow, dark blue, pink, green, orange, red, purple and light blue dresses. No two cards were alike. The girls played with their fairy memory cards all the time. Stanley the Stag Beetle thought of a horrid joke to play. I could scribble on all the cards, he thought naughtily to himself, but he didn't dare do it. And so he tried to talk Balthazar into ruining the pretty cards. Balthazar, wouldn't it be funny to scribble all over Flutter's cards? The silly bumblebee gave a sneaky snigger and started to scribble on the cards with a dark green felt-tip pen. He drew moustaches, devil's horns, forks and a devil's tail on the pictures of the pretty fairies. The butterfly girl saw her cards that afternoon and screamed in horror. What happened to my lovely cards? She asked in a panicky voice and Flutter began to sob. What a horrid thing to do! Who could have done such a thing? Dolly asked, sounding terribly shocked. I know who did it. Balthazar's the only one with a dark green pen, Zephyr said in an angry tone. And I saw a green mark on his hand. Did you do this? Berry asked gruffly. That's not how it happened. Then how did it happen? <laughs> it's all Stanley's fault. It was his idea. But I didn't scribble all over the cards. <laughs> Flutter sobbed and Reggie Squirrel gave her a comforting cuddle. <laughs> the one who thought it up is naughty and the one who did it. Reggie Squirrel snapped strictly. You're both naughty. That was a really stupid joke, boys. Just imagine if we burst your football. Zephyr added. How sad would that make you feel? You're right, Stanley admitted. Flutter, we'll take your cards and see if we can get the scribbles off them. OK. OK, sniffed the butterfly girl. Stanley and Balthazar strolled sadly home and got straight to work trying to fix the cards they had scribbled all over. But the harder they tried, the more mess they made. The rubber made a hole in the paper and holes appeared all over the place. Barry, help! 
We couldn't rub the scribbles off and we've made a hole with all the rubbing. That's because you can't rub felt-tip pen out. Let's go and ask Dolly for help. Dolly, help! We can't fix the cards. I'm not going to help you. It was all your idea, so you have to put it right. Don't be so unfair. Please help, because Stanley and Balthazar really do want to make things better again. OK, come on in. The three boys sat down at the table. Hmm, they can't be fixed. The boys just sat and looked sad. We have to think of something else, and I've already got an idea. Let's make new cards. Dolly placed pieces of white card on the table and took out her felt-tip pens. The boys cut the cards out and Dolly tried to copy the fairy pictures. Then Balthazar and Stanley carefully coloured the drawings in. All eight fairies were soon ready and of course there were two of each. You draw so nicely Dolly. Now give them to Flutter and say that you're sorry. Flutter, look! We've made you a whole new set of cards! Dolly drew them and we coloured them in! Please be friends with us again! Flutter flicked through all the cards and a smile spread across her face. Thank you! She said and invited the boys into the house. They were soon joined by Berry, Dolly and Zephyr and the friends played until late with the new pack of cards. And they were all the best of friends once again. The Puppet Show One sunny summer morning, Berry knocked hard on Dolly's door. It's the Puppet Show today. Let's go and tell Flutter and Eddie too. Berry and Dolly's first stop was at the pretty butterfly's house. Wake up, Flutter. The fleas are going to give a puppet show. It's Snow White. The little friends stopped in front of the Potato Beetle's house. Eddie, are you coming to see the puppet show? But Eddie didn't open his door. Hurry up, Eddie, we're going to be late, Berry shouted, but there was still no answer. Flutter gently turned the handle and popped her head inside. Are you still in your pyjamas, Eddie? Berry grumbled. Hurry up and get dressed. I'm not going. My tummy's covered in nasty bites. It really itches, Eddie sobbed. Let me have a look, Dolly told him. They're not bites. You've got chicken pox, the ladybird girl told her sickly friend. There's no need to be scared. I've had them already and I had thousands of spots. I'll go and get Dr Owl, Dolly announced. He'll know what to do. Dr Owl soon arrived and took a good look at Eddie. Hmm, it's definitely chicken pox. Chicken pox is contagious, Eddie. I'm afraid you won't be able to go to the puppet show. Contagious? Does that mean Berry, Dolly and Flutter are going to catch my chicken pox? No, don't worry, you can only catch chicken pox once and they all had it last year. You mustn't scratch your spots. There'll be another puppet show, Berry reassured him. Don't be sad, you'll get better soon, Dolly smiled. Berry, Dolly and Flutter said goodbye to the little potato beetle and hurried off to see the puppet show. The puppet show was already set up in the meadow and the puppeteers were five fleas. The curtains soon opened and the puppet show began. They all watched the rest of the puppet show and clapped loudly at the end. The flea puppeteers came out from behind the tent and took a bow. It's such a shame that Eddie couldn't come with us, Dolly said with a sad smile. 
I'm sure he'd have really liked it. Why don't we put a puppet show on for him? Dolly suddenly suggested. That's a super idea, Dolly, Flutter said. And the three friends were soon all hard at work. Flutter drew dwarves, Dolly drew Snow White and the Prince, and Berry drew the Wicked Queen. Then they cut their drawings out and glued them onto sticks. When they were ready, they all crept under Eddie's window and tapped on the glass. The little potato beetle opened the window and looked out. Let the puppet show begin, Berry announced, and the three friends started the show. Thank you, he said. You're the best friends a beetle could have. Dr Owl came back ten days later and all Eddie's spots had gone. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Hot Air Balloon One summer afternoon a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over. Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly. Someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adette the Oil Beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The Oil Beetle sniffled. They lifted Adette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry, Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready! said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying! Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, 
the little friend said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. The Little Bumblebee Early one morning, Berry, Dolly and Balthazar went out to play in the meadow. They wanted to try out the new parachute the little bee had made. But a little bumblebee was picking lilac flowers and singing a happy song. The winter's gone and it's the spring. Lilac is my favourite thing. Balthazar was the first to greet her. Hello, little bumblebee. My name's Balthazar. This is Berry the Snail and Dolly the Ladybird. Who are you? My name's Betty. I was flying home and I decided to stop and pick lilac flowers in the meadow. We're on our way to try this new parachute. Do you want to come with us? Balthazar asked. I'd love to. Balthazar and Betty were the first to jump and then the other friends tried the colourful parachute. They played until it got dark. Will you play with us again tomorrow? Balthazar asked excitedly. I can't. I have to leave early tomorrow morning. My home is far away from here and I still have a long way to go. So Berry, Dolly and Balthazar said goodbye to Betty. Balthazar looked very upset, so Dolly asked him. What's wrong? <laughs> Balthazar's got a girlfriend, Berry laughed. Don't make fun of him, Berry, Dolly said angrily. You know what, Balthazar? Ask Betty to stay here. We can build her a house in the woods. That's a super idea. I'll go to the meadow tomorrow morning and ask her to stay. Balthazar, Dolly and Berry got up very early the next day. They hurried to the meadow to talk to Betty. But the friends were too late. The little bumblebee had already left. The only thing they found was a farewell note she'd left for them pinned to a tree. Balthazar sat down on the grass and started to cry. Berry didn't laugh at him this time. Let's go after her, the little snail said. I'm sure we can catch her up. Berry, you're such a slow snail. We'll never catch up with Betty if you don't hurry up. Berry was going to say something back to Balthazar when a hedgehog stepped out of the bushes. Perhaps I can help. Now I'm not too fast, but I'm sure I'm much faster than you three. The friends liked the idea. They built a little cart out of a horse chestnut shell and tied it to the hedgehog's spikes. The hedgehog cart was ready to roll. Let's rest a little while, Dolly suggested when it got dark. We'll carry on tomorrow morning. Balthazar started to cry again. We'll never find her. I can smell something sweet. It's lilac blossom. Lilac? Dolly wondered. But there aren't any lilac bushes around here. Let's look around. Would you like to come back and live with us? We could build you a little bumblebee house in a tree. You wouldn't have to fly back to your faraway home. We'd be so happy if you lived with us. That's a super idea. We'd all be very happy. Berry and Dolly nodded. Thank you. I'd love to come and live with you. Betty replied. 
she was happy. You came all this way to find me. That's so nice of you. They all jumped into the hedgehog cart and trundled back to the meadow. They started to build the house the very next morning. They built Betty a pretty tree house near the lilac field. When the bumblebee's house was ready, they had a big party. All the forest friends were invited. They danced and ate late into the night and made their new neighbour very welcome indeed. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Spring Sports Day. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar were sitting by the lake, throwing pebbles into the water. Berry hit a floating log a couple of times and his friends clapped. Come down to the meadow now. The spring sports day is about to start, Stanley told them all. Their forest friends had already gathered in the meadow. The little beetles all put their running shorts on and stood in line. They all ran as fast as they could. They had to run three times around the meadow. It's not fair! Eddie cheated! He cut the corner! Leapy the grasshopper shouted. There's to be no cheating! Let's start the competition again, but no cheating! Stanley came first, Leapy came second and Balthazar came third. Berry finished last. Balthazar and Eddie started whispering. He's as slow as a snail. Don't make fun of him, it's not nice, Dolly said angrily. Now it's time for the high jump. The one who can pick the highest apple is the winner, Alfonso said. The friends took a run and tried to jump as high as possible. Leapy got the highest apple, Flutter got the second one, and Eddie the potato beetle grabbed the third apple. No matter how hard Berry tried, he couldn't even reach the lowest apple. I can't do it. I just can't do it, he sulked. Come on, Berry, you'll be better at the next race. Don't be sad, Rosita said. But Berry was too nervous to join the rolling race because he was frightened he'd crack his shell. The others all lined up and rolled from one end of the meadow to the other. Dolly was the fastest and she won. Now let's start flying, Alfonso said. The fastest to fly to the top of this tree and get a pine cone from there is the winner. The beetles started immediately. Flutter, Balthazar, Dolly and Zephyr all joined the race. Flutter was the fastest and got to the top of the tree first. I can't fly either, Berry snivelled. Don't be so angry, Berry. It's time for the skipping competition now. The fastest skipper wins. The four contestants started skipping. But suddenly, Berry got tangled in the rope and hurt himself. The others were worried and ran over to him. I'm not doing any more silly races. I can't do anything. I'm going home. We have to think of something. We have to cheer Berry up, Dolly said. You're right. What's he really good at? Rosita asked. I know, Flutter shouted. Throwing! That's a super idea, Balthazar agreed. Berry was the only one who could hit the log in the lake. They made five piles. The first one was made out of apples, the second of horse chestnuts, the third of pine cones, the fourth out of hazelnuts, and the fifth one out of pears. Dolly convinced Berry to come back to the meadow. It's time for the throwing competition. Do you want to join in? Rosita asked. Hooray! Throwing! Of course I'm in! Everybody had a go, but Berry was the best. He was the only one who managed to knock over all five piles. You see, Berry, I'm the best runner. Leapy's the best high jumper. Flutter's the best at flying. Dolly at rolling. Rosita can skip the fastest. And you're 
the best thrower. Everybody's good at something, Stanley explained. Berry got a beautiful shiny chestnut engraved by Alfonso, which said, throwing first place. Little kids and big kids. There were two football pitches next to the kindergarten. The little kids played next to the pine tree. Bubble the baby beetle was the captain. The little bark beetle was goalie and the ant boys made up the rest of the team. The big kids played in the shade of the oak tree. Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bumblebee, Eddie the potato beetle and Berry the snail boy. The little kids played with a spotty rubber ball. The big kids had a proper football. One autumn day, Balthazar picked up the little kid's ball and he started to do tricks with it. Look at this, he teased. Give it back, it's ours, Bubble whined. I only want to show you how high I can kick it, boasted Balthazar and he gave the rubber ball a mighty kick. He kicked it so hard that the ball burst. Oh, oh. <laughs> now there's only one ball left. The little kids can have it in the morning and the big kids can play with it in the afternoon, the kindergarten teacher decreed. The big kids kept taking the ball from the little kids. And the little kids would steal it from the big kids. They were constantly quarrelling. you play together? Dolly asked the boys. Together? Never. The little kids are weedy and clumsy, yelled Stanley the stag beetle. And the big kids are horrid and pushy, the little ant boy shouted back. Stop being so silly. Play a match instead. Little kids versus big kids. How can four little kids win against four big kids? The bark beetle complained. All right then, Leapy and I will join in with the little kids. Then there'll be six of us against four big kids. How about that? The ladybird girl asked. Super, they all agreed. They started to play. They had so much fun that they hardly noticed the time fly by. In the end, thanks to a tricky goal from Bubble, the little kids won the match 5-4. Same again tomorrow, Balthazar said to Bubble the baby beetle. We can play a rematch. <laughs> the next day they played the rematch. This time, the big kids beat Bubbles' team 4-3. The little kids aren't so clumsy after all, Stanley grumbled, and the two captains shook hands. A new boy came to kindergarten the day after that. The little flea brought his own stripy ball and he let the little kids play with it. This meant that Bubbles' team went back to the pine tree and the big kids stayed on the larger pitch. They sometimes played together after that, but they did not count the goals. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today?
the rainbow. It was a rainy summer day. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat sadly underneath a giant leaf. Then the sun came out and the sky was blue again. But the shower didn't stop. And soon a colourful rainbow stretched across the sky. It's beautiful, they shouted. Berry thought it would be a good idea to climb up the rainbow and slide down on the other side. But his first try didn't work. I think I'll try from the other side, he said. Trust me, you can't climb a rainbow, Dolly said to the excited snail. But then Berry came up with a new plan. I'll use a ladder. Oh, Berry, I don't think it's a good idea, Dolly said anxiously. Dolly was right and Berry was angry. Dolly tried to distract her friend. Come and play something else. But Berry still didn't give up. Look, Dolly, I'm sure I can jump on top of it from here. But that idea didn't work either. Dolly ran over to Berry. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine, Berry sulked. Berry was very sad and Dolly tried everything to cheer him up. I got you some flowers, she said kindly. But Berry couldn't be comforted. Then the rain dried up and the rainbow disappeared. They walked home hand in hand and Dolly said nice things to the little snail. Chin up, Berry. It's your birthday the day after tomorrow and I'm sure you'll get some super presents. Dolly had a great idea when she got home. I'll make a rainbow slide for Berry's birthday, she said to herself. Then his dream can come true and he can slide down a rainbow. Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly helped her. Balthazar, Dolly and Flutter painted the slide with colourful paint, wrapped it in yellow paper and tied it up with a blue ribbon. The three friends even baked a cake for Berry. When the time came, Balthazar and Flutter took Berry to Dolly's house, where everything was ready for the birthday party. Let's give him his presents, yelled Balthazar. And Dolly gave Berry the chocolate cake. A real rainbow, a rainbow slide. Can I try the slide? Sure you can, Dolly replied. Berry liked the rainbow slide very much. He slid on it again and again. Flutter and Balthazar were so happy they started to dance. You know, Dolly, said Berry, it really is a nice present. Thank you. Lots of friends joined in the birthday celebrations. There was Leapy the Grasshopper, Eddie the Potato Beetle, Zephyr the Dragonfly and even Stanley the Stag Beetle came. The little snail let everybody try his new slide. Berry, Dolly and their friends played on the slide until it got dark. Berry went to bed very happy that day. What a wonderful birthday I've had, he sighed with a smile. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Christmas. It was a crisp winter day and Berry the snail and Dolly the ladybird went into the woods to look for a bunch of Christmas greenery. Look, Berry. This little tree got knocked over in the storm. Let's take it home. 
We can decorate it for Christmas. Hooray! We'll have a real Christmas tree, Berry shouted. They lifted the tree up and saw a centipede sheltering under its branches. Help me, Berry. Let's put him on the sledge. He's hurt himself and looks very cold. We can take him to my house. They lifted the centipede carefully onto the sledge. Will he be all right? Berry worried. Of course he will, Dolly reassured her friend. When they got home, they put the poorly centipede to bed. Dolly made him hot tea and Berry read him caterpillar stories from a storybook. Next morning, the centipede opened his eyes and smiled a little smile. He got better every day and soon he was healthy again. Dolly asked him to stay. You're so nice. Don't go, centipede. Spend Christmas with us. Well, thank you. I'd love to stay. But what should we get him for Christmas? Dolly wondered. What would make a centipede happy? Dolly told him her idea. The little snail nodded excitedly. Berry and Dolly went to see the ants. The queen ant welcomed them with open arms. Dolly told them what kind of present she thought of. We can make anything you want, said the queen. Christmas came and Berry and Dolly made a tree stand. As night fell, Berry gave Dolly her present. Merry Christmas, Dolly. Thank you, Berry, the ladybird said. She was delighted. It's beautiful. Dolly was very happy and wound the pretty ribbon around the tree. Merry Christmas to you too, Dolly said and handed Berry his present. Sparklers, super. Let's put them on the tree. They lit the sparklers and crackling sparks danced around the Christmas tree. The glittering light attracted lots of tiny fireflies and each brought a Christmas decoration. Even the centipede helped to trim the tree. Soon the ants arrived carrying a parcel. They handed it to Berry and Dolly. This is our present to you, centipede, Berry said to him. Merry Christmas. Boots, he shouted happily. They'll keep your little feet warm when you're walking in the snow, Dolly explained. The friends' celebrations went on late into the night. There was Eddie the potato beetle, Stanley the stag beetle, Alfonso the cricket and Rosita the rose beetle. The fireflies built a big snowman with the little ants. They all sang and danced around the Christmas tree. Flutter the butterfly came to celebrate with them. Zephyr the dragonfly danced with Leapy the grasshopper. Berry and Dolly skipped around with Balthazar the bee. When the party was over, the centipede cleaned his boots and put them on a shelf. What a wonderful day I've had. It's a shame that Christmas only comes once a year. Easter eggs. Easter had arrived at last. Flutter the Butterfly Girl, Rosita the Rose Beetle, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl and Zephyr the Dragonfly all gathered together at Dolly's house to paint eggs for Easter. How many eggs do we have to paint? Rosita asked. Now let's see, Berry is certain to come and visit tomorrow, but so is Balthazar, Stanley, Eddie, Bubble, Alfonso and Sam Snail. That means we need to paint seven eggs each. We better get started. Oh, they look so 
pretty. I'm sure that the boys will love them, Flutter told the others. It's time to go home. I've got to get up early tomorrow to make pancakes for the boys, Flutter said. I'm going to bake scones, Rosita said. And I'm going to make an apple strudel, Dolly added. All the girls got up bright and early the next morning. Flutter hurried into the kitchen, put on her apron and mixed up a big batch of pancake batter. Rosita popped her apron on and started to knead her scone dough. Dolly rolled her pastry out and Zephyr made a sponge roll. Leapy woke up feeling quite excited. Boys never get up early, I've still got plenty of time to bake an apple pie. And she put a big basket of apples on the table. Oh dear. The basket of apples tipped over and knocked her pretty painted Easter eggs onto the floor. They were all <laughs> ruined. Oh, my eggs! Now what am I going to do? What will I give to my visitors? The little grasshopper girl sobbed as she ran to Dolly's house. Dolly, I've smashed all seven of my eggs! Help me! I haven't got time, Leapy. I'm busy baking. But I've still got two unpainted eggs. If you paint them quickly, they'll be dry by the time the boys come. Rosita! Oh, my eggs got smashed! Can you help? I'm too busy baking, but you can have these three white eggs. You've still got time to paint them if you hurry. Flutter! Help! I've got to paint my eggs all over again. The first lot could break them. All of them? I am sorry, but I can't help now. My pancakes will burn. You can have these two unpainted eggs I've got left over. Something terrible has happened, Zephyr. I've broken all the eggs I painted yesterday. Please help me because I haven't got time to paint another seven eggs. Leapy complained to her dragonfly friend. I know who can help you. Come with me. The two friends ran through the forest all the way to a cave. The spider stumbled sleepily from his home. Oh, can you help us, spider? Zephyr asked. Leapy's eggs all got broken. And now she has to paint new ones and there's not much time left. The boys will be coming to visit her soon. If I have to, the spider grumbled. Thank you. You're very kind. Leapy got out all her paints and brushes and the two of them started to paint the eggs. The spider could paint three eggs at once. We're ready, Leapy said with a happy laugh. And then she thanked the spider for his help and she arranged the pretty eggs in a dish. There soon came a knock at Leapy's front door. She opened the door and was greeted by all seven boys at once. Happy Easter, Leapy! They had all come to see Leapy, who offered them a dish and they all chose a pretty Easter egg. I haven't got any cakes to offer you, I'm afraid, Leapy said in a whisper, and then she told them all about what had happened. Don't worry about that, the boys laughed. We ate strudel at Dolly's house, scones at Rosita's house, pancakes at Flutter's house, and sponge roll at Zephyr's house. Our tummies are full. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Seashells. Zephyr the dragonfly and Leapy the grasshopper girl were collecting pebbles down by the stream. Dr. Owl flew down to join them. I'm going to see Bubble. He's got a sore throat, he said and hurried on. But soon after that, he tripped on a tree root and fell over. His doctor's bag flew open and everything fell out onto the ground. Leapy and Zephyr helped to gather up all of his things. As well as medical instruments, they found all kinds of strange things. They were presents from my patients. You shouldn't keep such beautiful treasures in your doctor's bag. You're right. I'll look for a small box, the old owl nodded, but I've got to hurry because Bubble is waiting for me. 
Bye bye, Dr. Owl, the girls shouted after him. Zephyr and Leapy were strolling home when they saw the robin outside Dolly's house. The red bird was just saying goodbye to the ladybird girl. I have to go now. It's a long flight to the seaside. Are you going to the seaside? Can we go with you too? Asked Zephyr and Leapy with glee. I'd be happy to take you, the bird replied. They could clearly see the whole forest from high in the sky, as well as the lake and all the little houses. They flew for a very long time until they reached the endless blue of the salty sea. Thank you for your help, Robin. And the friends ran quickly to the sandy beach. They collected super seashells and could hardly decide which ones they liked the best. Look, this one's beautiful too. I'll put it in the bag, said Leapy as the treasures began to collect in the little bag. Just then the crab appeared and walked straight through the sand-coloured bag, smashing their carefully collected pile of seashells into little pieces. Oh, oh, the shells! She nervously tipped the contents of the bag out onto the sand, but not one single shell was still intact. <laughs> Don't be sad. The best shells are never on the beach, but deep down at the bottom of the sea, I'll bring you much more beautiful seashells. The girls liked the sound of this. The crab jumped quickly into the sea and very soon reappeared with a collection of fabulous seashells. He kept doing this until the bag was completely full. They're beautiful seashells, Crab. Thank you. It's time for us to go home. We have to find the robin. But the robin had no intention of going home. Not until the spring, she said sulkily. Then how will we get home again? The girls asked. Bye, turtle! Come on! I'll give you a ride, said a voice from the waves. So Leapy and Zephyr travelled home on the turtle's back. When they arrived back home, they thanked the turtle for his help and said goodbye. The next day, Leapy and Zephyr showed Berry and Dolly all the lovely seashells they had collected. Let's make something out of them, Berry suggested. That's the super idea, but what? asked Zephyr. Oh, I know, let's make a box for Dr Owl's treasures, Leapy said, and they all got hard to work. The old owl was very pleased with the box and he carefully placed his collection of special things inside. A pebble, a pine cone, a conker, a pressed flower, a pencil, some drawings, and a wooden horse. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Snowman. One cold winter morning, Berry the snail knocked on Dolly's front door. Let's go and play with my sledge in the snow. Dolly quickly put on her winter coat and her hat, scarf and gloves. She sat on the sledge and the little snail pulled her along. Eventually, the snow stopped. Berry and Dolly enjoyed the winter sunshine they sledged down the steep side of the hill. Look at that super snowman! Berry shouted. Oh dear, we're going to hit it! But it was too late. The sledge ran right into the snowman that stood at the foot of the hill. Did you hurt yourself? Berry asked Dolly. No, I didn't, but I think we've ruined the snowman. Yes, it tipped right over, Berry said. I'm going to eat its carrot nose. Let's have a snowball fight with the snow from the snowman. Berry and Dolly started to throw snowballs.
It was a lot of fun. Soon there was almost nothing left of the snowman. Just then, Balthazar the bee appeared and said hello to his friends. Do you want to throw snowballs with us? I'm too busy. I've brought a hat and a scarf to put on my snowman I built yesterday. Haven't you seen it? Barry and Dolly looked at each other. Oh dear, Barry whispered. Balthazar must be looking for the snowman we hit. They didn't dare tell Balthazar that they'd knocked his snowman over. No, we haven't seen a snowman. I can't find my snowman anywhere. <laughs> Berry and Dolly felt very sorry for the little bee. <laughs> Don't be sad, Berry said finally. Let's build a new one. <laughs> OK, Balthazar sniffled. Dolly made the biggest snowball. It went on the bottom. Balthazar made the middle one for the snowman's tummy. And Berry made the smallest snowball for the snowman's head. Then Dolly lifted Berry up so he could stick the head on top. Then the snowman was finished and Balthazar could finally put the stripy scarf around its neck. Berry took a big jump and put the red saucepan on its head for a hat. Hey, it looks really super, Balthazar said enthusiastically. Balthazar, we've got something to tell you. We smashed your first snowman. We slid right into it with our sledge. It was an accident. What? It was you? Balthazar was very surprised, but then he soon forgave his friends. This snowman looks much better than the first one, he declared. Come on, let's sledge down the hill together. Berry, Dolly and Balthazar played with the sledge until it got dark and were very careful not to hit their new snowman. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The football match. One morning, Stanley was woken by the sound of someone knocking on his door. Stanley, it's me, Frank. The little stag beetle crawled out of his bed and saw Frank the longhorn beetle. Hello there, Frank. It's super to see you, Stanley said, and the old pals hugged. I brought this for you. A football hooray! We'll need teams to play a proper game. Frank reminded him. Then we'll tell the others to come and we'll have proper teams, the stag beetle suggested. The two boys called on all the others to come and play football with them. They visited every house and by the time they had reached the edge of the forest, they had two teams. Alfonso agreed to be the referee. We should sew them football shirts, Rosita suggested. One team can play in blue and one team can play in red. The footballers spent the whole week training. We sewed these for you, Zephyr told them, and she handed the red and blue shirts to Stanley. Thank you, the two teams said together, and they slipped on their new football shirts. Dolly and Rosita set benches up, and the spectators all sat at the side of the pitch. Alfonso blew his referee's whistle and the match began. That's it, run, Bubble, Stanley yelled. Here, pass it to me, Bubble shouted. Hooray! The blue team cheered as they all embraced. Come!
Come on, Reds! Come on, Blues! The crowd cheered. That's not fair, Frank. You can't touch the ball with your hand, the B-boy complained. Balthazar's right. Don't do it again, Frank. It's against the rules, the referee said. The match got very exciting. The Blues were leading three goals to two when the game stopped again. Frank tripped me up, Bubble complained. Yes, I saw that too, Alfonso agreed. I'll have to send you off if you break the rules again, Frank. Stanley's team looked set to win. Frank started to get crosser and crosser. I'm going to score a goal now, he shouted, and he pushed Barry so hard that they ended up falling over and Frank shouted out in pain. Ouch! My arm! The others all ran over. I'll run and fetch Dr Owl, Zephyr announced. If you hadn't hurt yourself so badly, I'd send you off, Alfonso said. Yes, I know, Frank said sadly, but my hand really hurts. Dr Owl was soon at the scene. Well, you've broken your arm. I'll have to put it in plaster and you'll have to keep it on for four weeks. You'll need to look after it and no running around. The blue team won the football match. We'll have to wait a while before we can play again. Stanley said, and he patted Frank on the back. Don't be sad, you'll soon be as fit as a fiddle again. I'm sorry that I broke the rules, Frank sniffed. I promise to play fairly when my arm has mended, and we can have another good game of football. I think we should all decorate Frank's plaster cast, Dolly said with a grin. Let's go back to my house for a snack. The big crowd of friends all piled into Dolly's spotty house. They got her crayons out and drew all kinds of funny things on the Longhorn Beetle's plaster. I'm going to keep it as a souvenir after Dr Owl takes it off, Frank told them all. Then all the friends sat around the table and ate every last piece of the delicious sponge roll. Today. The Kite Berry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Berry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. I'll climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly, Dolly explained. But the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry! Help! Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet. But he couldn't pull her back. So now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet, but he couldn't pull the kite back either. So now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet. So now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet, so now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet, 
So now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair. got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try, the others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Dumplings. One autumn day, Dolly the ladybird cooked plum dumplings and invited her friends to lunch. Berry came along and so did Balthazar, Stanley and Flutter. The little ladybird girl put three dumplings on each plate. Berry, Dolly and Flutter were soon full. Hmm, plum dumplings, I love them, I could eat five, said Balthazar the bee. Five is nothing. I could eat seven. Seven? I could eat eight. I could eat ten, the little stag beetle announced. Then let's have a competition, Balthazar concluded. Let's see who can eat the most dumplings. Dolly didn't like the sound of this, and she tried to talk them out of it, but the boys were determined. It'll all end in tears, she warned, but Balthazar and Stanley wouldn't listen. We've already eaten three dumplings. Now let's eat the fourth, Stanley suggested, and he plopped another dumpling onto each plate. When they had finished, they put another on their plates and ate a fifth dumpling each. After the fifth, they ate a sixth. After the sixth, they ate a seventh. After the seventh, they ate an eighth. And then a ninth dumpling. And now for the tenth. Can you keep going? Balthazar asked. I could eat twice as many, Stanley said with a shrug. The two friends ate so many dumplings that their tummies started to hurt more and more. I'll run and get Dr. Owl, shouted Flutter the Butterfly. Dr. Owl examined them both and gave them a good telling off. What have you two been doing? I'm not surprised that you've got stomach ache. They ate 15 each, Berry said as he counted the plum stones on the plates. And so it was a draw after all. It was a very silly thing to do. You'll only be allowed to eat boiled potatoes for three days. 
But the chimney cake man's coming to the forest tomorrow, Stanley complained. I'm very sorry, but there's going to be no chimney cake for you. Come and see me in three days and I'll take a look at your tummies again, Dr Owl said with a scowl, and he flew away home. The very next day, the firebug arrived in the meadow with his delicious chimney cakes. All the forest friends flocked to the stall to sample his tasty wares. I'd like a cinnamon one, Dolly said. And I'd like a coconut one, Berry added. I only want sugar on mine, Flutter shouted. But there were also cakes with walnuts, poppy seeds and chocolate on them. Balthazar and Stanley looked sadly on, but they did as Dr Owl had told them. On the third day, the little bee and his stag beetle friend went to see Dr Owl. Now let's take a look at you, said the elderly owl, as he examined them both thoroughly. You appear to be better. I can see that you did as you were told. We did, Stanley said with a sob, but I so wanted to eat a chimney cake. Stanley and Balthazar said goodbye to Dr Owl and were walking home when the old bird shouted after them. Wait one second. I've got something for you here. I saved two chimney cakes for you. You went to the meadow, Dr Owl. Of course. I bought chimney cakes for my chicks and I put two away for you. You did exactly as I said, and so I thought you deserved a treat. Thank you, the two friends said with a smile, and they both threw their arms around Dr Owl. Dolly say, what will we learn today? Four Seasons One day at the end of the winter, three bark beetles knocked angrily on Leapy's door. We wanted to dress up as princes for the party, but the three fleas are going to be princes. And that's not good. Our crowns and capes are all ready, but we can't wear them. Oh... Please help us. Have you got any ideas what we could wear? They all shouted at once. Maybe you could be three snowballs because everything is covered in snow outside. It would be easy to make the costumes. Oh, no. That's no good, Leapy. We'd melt the minute we walked into Balthazar's house. We'd turn into a puddle on the floor in no time at all. Hmm... Well, then you could go as cutlery, a knife, a fork and a spoon. You'd only need silver foil. That's a super idea, Leapy. But we haven't got any silver foil. And we haven't got enough time before tomorrow to get some. We need to think of something simpler. What do you say to a camel? That's perfect for the three of you. A head and two humps. Yes, but the ants went as a camel last year, so it's been done. We need to think of something new. And what are you going as, Leapy? The bark beetles asked. I don't know. I still haven't decided. The grasshopper girl hesitated. Then the four of us could go together, the boys suggested. OK, but what could we go as? Four flowers? Or four devils? Maybe four stars, or four planets, the bark beetles listed. Mm, that's not good enough. We need to go with something that there are only four of. Only four, no more, no less. I know the perfect thing, the four seasons. Yes, that's perfect, the bark beetle said and jumped up and down. There are four seasons. Leapy can be spring because that's girly. And we can dress up as summer. Autumn and winter! They all got hard to work. Leapy sewed herself a pink dress and decorated it with white flowers. She put a pink flower crown on her head. She looked so pretty that the bark beetles all blushed when they saw her. The three boys' costumes were soon finished. Summer wore green with a sun on his tummy and a leaf on his hat. 
autumn wore all yellow, covered in colourful leaves. Winter's costume was blue, with lots and lots of snowflakes. The next day they all set off to Balthazar's house for the fancy dress party. The bumblebee was dressed as a fireman. He warmly welcomed Leapy and the bark beetles. The four seasons have arrived! Eddie was dressed as a carrot, Bubble as a rocket, Betty as a drop of water, Rosita as a bird, Zephyr as a bus ticket, Morris as a sugar cube, Flutter as a banana, Dolly as a sweetie and Charlie as a dog. The forest friends voted for the best costume. And of course, the Four Seasons won. Stanley came second with his rainbow costume. Third place went to the snails, to Berry and Sam who came dressed as a train. Everybody was very happy and the three fleas came to congratulate the winners.